everyone. I'm Neza Alawi, CEO of Meishad, an international organization that empowers women through capacity building, leadership initiatives, and networking. Our guest today is Lauren Conlin, host of Red Carpet Rendezvous podcast and general manager, reporter, and producer at Magic Shack Media. Hi, Lauren. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so great to be hosting you today. So Magic Shack is a trailblazer on um, how to tell stories. Sure. And so can, can you tell me a little bit on like how you differentiate your agencies from the other ones and then mm -hmm. what is your vision about Magic Shack? Sure. So my brother and I, um, my brother's an Emmy award winning videographer. Mm -hmm. He's worked at Broadway.com and he's worked at New York One. And he had approached me and said, you know, we should start a production company. I mm -hmm. think that would be great. We can take my contacts and your contacts, put them together and start this boutique video production company that also specializes in advertising and marketing. Mm -hmm. So um, we have done everything from corporate videos to Broadway show opening night and it's just been so amazing and yes. so much fun and it's just great because you know we have a vision and mm -hmm. um, and we work so well together and we're able to just sort of make magic happen through video. <laughs> that's, that's amazing and uh, working with family is not always easy so when you can do it and be creative about it that's, uh, that's even greater. Mm -hmm. um, storytelling has been at the core of all communications and as you said that's what creates the magic when we're relating uh, a story but then the attention span of the audience is getting shorter and shorter so hence the difficulty of it and how yeah, how are you coping with that? Is is that his part of the job or yours? Well, so I also have a podcast, Red Carpet Rendezvous mm -hmm. Podcast, and I am crazy about keeping these podcasts okay. to under an hour because of this. I am one of those people that have a short yeah. attention span. <laughs> I totally am. I'm, I'm going to admit it, but um, my podcasts range between 10 minutes Mm -hmm. and um, 50 minutes basically and for me it just it depends on the episode but it's easy mm -hmm. for me to keep it like that I you know I, I get to the point um, there's always you know something else is when I'm doing red carpets for mm -hmm. entertainment stuff it's like you have to tell a story in one to two minutes a beginning middle and end so if you practice yes. that enough okay. you can get it done great um, one second it's okay if you you pause it. I'm just going to the questions, but it's it's we're gonna continue from there. Yes. Okay. Lauren, could you share with us um, your inspiration to launch your podcast? Yes. <laughs> so I was actually very tardy to the party with yes. my career. I worked um, in email marketing and online advertising for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And I always had this, this passion to be on camera and report on celebrities and yes. entertainment and movies. I love film, Broadway, fashion, all of that stuff. So with Magic Shack, we were contracted to work for um, a New York One reporter for these red carpets and it was so much fun mm -hmm. and I had a great time helping him and working off the carpet and you know I said to myself this would be kind of cool to turn into a podcast mm -hmm. so I approached him and I said do you mind if I, if I do this on the side mm -hmm. and he was so encouraging and so supportive um, that he let me use a lot of his public relations contacts to get on these carpets and then I was able to interview these celebrities and um, just public figures about the films they were doing, the events that were happening, and take them onto a podcast, which I thought was very special because people, you know, in middle America, they don't get to see what's happening on these red carpets and how crazy they are and how they're not actually as glamorous as everybody thinks. Yes. So that was my inspiration, and I launched it October of 2019, a year ago. And yeah, we're, we're still going strong. It's just a little bit different now that there are no red carpets due to the pandemic. Yes, so, so how, how has your work has been impacted in 2020 with the pandemic? Well, <laughs> so instead of going on um, in-person press days mm -hmm. or junkets, when there's a movie coming out, um, there's something called a virtual junket on okay. Zoom, which has been super fun and actually yes. very weird um, <laughs> in a way, but everybody from all these different 
press places and um, you know news stations. We all kind of hop on Zoom and we're put into these breakout rooms and then they push us in one by one mm -hmm. to get about five to ten minutes with the actor, director, or whoever mm -hmm. um, to talk about this movie and, and promote it however we're promoting it. I also do um, direct uh, I reach out directly to these people as well, um, different celebrities if they have films coming out, just to have a, a Zoom conversation with them for the podcast, which is nice, but I'll say yes. it takes like 10 minutes to really get into get it. Into so it. I think a lot of people are getting mm -hmm. Zoom fatigue. It's, yes. not, it's not, you know, ideal. It's, it's innovative to be able to continue through this pandemic. And of course, things will shift after, you know, if, if, People are used to be working on Zoom now, mm -hmm. and, and uh, as a matter of fact, we shouldn't even be using the brands. But I mean, if, if there, it, I mean, it just took over our life mm -hmm. through this pandemic. It's, it's also that people will get used to to and will get comfortable in in working more digitally. So, mm -hmm. so that also has an impact in in the video production. And it helps, I would say, as well, just because I know. I probably wouldn't have had as many opportunities to mm -hmm. interview so many people and get 30 minutes of their time yes. if it wasn't for Zoom yes. and for everybody just being at home yes. and doing nothing. Totally. So tell, I, I, I love your career, it's really fascinating. So what, what do you have to share with our audience on the times where you put yourself on a goal, a dream, mm -hmm. and the challenges that we all face while trying to achieve the, that dream. But, but how do you get through the challenges and how have you been able to, to launch uh, this company, to launch your podcast? Um, yeah, give us some advice. It sounds crazy, but the advice that's been given to me is to just have patience. So mm -hmm. again, for me, since I started this very late, mm -hmm. my patience <laughs> is, um, it's a little thin and I really have to tell myself that all the time. I, I'll have a great week and I won't even let myself enjoy it because mm -hmm. I'll be thinking about the next week. And I really have to stop. I really have to be kind to myself. And I think that's that's very important that everybody should be kind um, to yourselves because you have enough haters out there. Yes. Enough people <laughs> are gonna hate on you. So, it's you know, true. why not just be nice to yourself. Yes. Um, that's the advice that I would give that's been given to me. And, you know, I, I'm i still working so mm -hmm. hard. I've only been at this for about a year and a half. So I have a long way to go and, and it, I'm not going to give up. There are times yes. that I feel like I'm, I'm just down and it's, it's also, it's, it's encouraging to see people yes. in your industry um, do well around mm -hmm. you. It actually makes you work harder and you can actually see there's so many opportunities. You just have to, to keep going. Amazing. And you are a mom. So you're going to tell us mm -hmm. about the, the balance that you keep between being a mom and, and building your career? Yes. So I have, um, I have a two-year-old and a four-year-old. Mm -hmm. So we're very busy. And I, I love the balance that I have between being a mom and, and having this career just because I am flexible where yes. I can take my kids to gymnastics and yes. to art and I can be with them for a full day and then the next day I can, I can you know, put heels on and, and get dressed up and it, it's really nice and I will say my daughter is four and a half and it's mm -hmm. taken me four years to find this balance. Um, so it was a lot of, yeah, a lot of ups and downs and frustrating mm -hmm. times and me saying, I don't know what I want to do, if I want to be a full-time mom, if I want to be a full-time career person. Um, but, but yeah, again, that also took patience. But right now, I'm really enjoying my time with them. And everybody says, it goes by so fast. Yes. And I'm always like, oh, stop. <laughs> but it does. It actually does. Yes. I can't believe my daughter's almost five. So yes. it does go by fast. <laughs> And, and when you say you started this project late, so you have mm -hmm. gone through career reinvention. And mm -hmm. so how do you make those decisions? When, when, when does it happen? Is the end of a phase? Uh, can you tell us about that? Yeah, um, so it was after my daughter, I went back to, to work um, where I was working in email marketing and I wasn't super happy and mm -hmm. I was missing spending the time with my daughter who is still so little yes. and my husband said you know why don't you quit and do something that you're passionate about and at that point my brother said you know why don't we do this production yes. company full-time and I was like that would be amazing let's let's do yes. it um, so I was scared yes. I was very scared but it ended up being the best de decision that I um, that I ever made <laughs> that's great and you went from working 
for a company to mm -hmm. becoming an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And uh, what people don't realize is that when you're an entrepreneur, it's 24-7. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you're on a job, you know, you can you can quit at 5 p.m. So so the pressure of being an entrepreneur So I um, I think I might be a little bit different. I think yes. my type a personality even at my Previous companies I was always on 24 7 so that never really mm -hmm. changed for me just because that's just the type of person I think that I am my brain doesn't really shut off which is um, a blessing and a curse yes. <laughs> I would say but no there there are a lot more challenges especially with COVID-19 um, you know Magic Shack went from doing all these in-person corporate shoots these Broadway openings that was a huge huge mm -hmm. client of ours is, is just Broadway and these PR companies to all of a sudden getting you know an edit project here and maybe a corporate shoot you know in six yes. months from now so it's it's definitely been challenging mm -hmm. and um, okay we're just pausing and you, we're gonna take it back yes Lauren what challenges have you faced in your industry mm -hmm. as a woman mm. well oh, that's so tough <laughs> I, I mean it's it's but obvious it's, that it's we we are living in a man's yes. world, right? I mean, I can't I can't deny that we are. Um, the challenges that I've faced mm -hmm. mainly, I would say, are just um, being taken seriously yes. this late in my career. I guess um, it it took took I would say a few months, which is actually yes. not bad for me to get my foot in the door sure. with a lot of different places. Um, where I contribute, because I also contribute on different news channels yes. and, and radio shows. I would say it, it took a little bit of time just because people think of entertainment and, and yes. a woman sort of as just gossip yes. and celebrity and they don't mm -hmm. really take it seriously. So I would say it, it took some time for me to sort of be taken mm -hmm. seriously, which is a, a challenge for, I think, um, all women. So, and, and how do you ensure that in the work you're doing mm -hmm. through your company, um, you're, you're pushing the fact that there is less gender gaps and, and diversity inclusion. Do you feel that you have a power to influence that? I would like to think so, um, but I think it's all about, um, it's what you put out there with your work, okay. right? Um, for me, when George Floyd was mm -hmm. murdered, it was so tragic. And I felt myself just thinking, you know, what can I do to help? Just mm -hmm. what can I do? So I, um, you know, I used my platform to help as best I could. I have a friend who started um, a movement, Buy Black 30, where you mm -hmm. only buy and you only shop and, and eat, um. Um, you know, through black business owners. So I put her on the podcast and I, I really just tried my hardest to, to do, to, yeah, to do what I, I to knew how to do okay. without sort of, you know, without, I guess, yes. stepping on toes and whatever. So I guess I just try to use my platform for good. Okay. And, and when you're working with your clients as well, do you have that influence in the content creation to put enough diversity out there? Yeah, I yes. mean, essentially it's up to the client um, for what they want, but we do always push it. You do always mm -hmm. push it. Yeah, it, regardless of whether it's aggressive or not, we, we just push it. How do you feel about 2021? And mm -hmm. are there any wishes that you have to put out there? Yeah, I mean, my wishes for 2021, I think, are mainly for my kids. Yes. I, I really want them to be in a good place. Yes. Um, they're too young to understand as much with what's going on um, in, terms, in terms of COVID-19, mm -hmm. but my daughter is starting to understand, and, um, and she's sort of... You know, she's in that that mindset where the masks are normal now, which which is good. Um, but I do I, I want her to get to a place where she's comfortable in her own skin and can can sort of live her life the way we we once lived it, or I can make her happy in the new normal. That's um, that's great. Uh, we, we know that tourism in New York is taking a huge hit, mm -hmm. and and. Broadway as well. Can you tell us about the conversations that you're having with Broadway producers? Yeah, sure. Um, so for me, Broadway was a huge part of my life. I obviously am a huge yes. fan, and um, I also help with the community theater uh, mm -hmm. group in Midtown Manhattan. So when 
Broadway shut down, we had to shut down our community theater mm -hmm. as well. So it's been very devastating. And, um, you know, it took New York City about four years to get back to the way it was mm -hmm. after 9-11, tourism-wise. So I wouldn't be surprised if it maybe took two years for Broadway to sort of get back to where it was. Um, but I did interview Ken Davenport, who is a major Tony-winning Broadway producer, mm -hmm. and he made some great points in saying, you cannot have a Broadway theater at 25% capacity, yes. which is why it's going to be out longer, mm -hmm. but in the end, it's going to come back stronger because you can't replace live theater. So my hopes is that Broadway Please comes bad. back for 2021. Yes. Um, and right now it's scheduled for the summertime, but if it does take a little bit longer, mm -hmm. I think the reason is going to be because they're building plexiglass around the, the aisles or they're, they're making the theater safer so the so audience hard. and the performers can feel safe. So um, while my fingers are crossed, I think there's a lot to be done to get Broadway back to the way that it was. It's, we, we're crossing fingers for, for Broadway and, and New York is, just such a unique platform for us in the art industry, the the all in on all cultural aspects. Mm -hmm. So um, we're hoping that it comes back. Do you feel that there are any digital solutions there? Meanwhile, I don't really, to be no. honest. I, I again, you cannot replace live theater. There for Broadway fans, there's the Broadway HD app where you can watch all these Broadway shows that were once filmed, but it's not the same. It's absolutely not the same. And while I loved watching Hamilton on Disney+, Plus, yes. I, I and I don't get me wrong, I got chills, I love that yes. music, I still was like, oh, I wish I was in the front row, I wish I was watching it. So there are no, there's no, um, nothing to Way replace to Broadway, replace. right? Like you can yes. be at your house and have a projector and watch a movie and maybe feel like you're in a mm -hmm. movie theater but you can't really feel like you're at a live yeah, Broadway um, show unless you're there. For sure. Lauren, do you feel that there is still space for indie movies and, and small productions mm -hmm. um, to take place? Oh my gosh, yes. yes. I am a huge indie film fan. Yes. I, I love them, I love promoting them because they are these hidden gems on your, your iTunes and on your Amazon Prime yes. that are like rentable for three yes. to six dollars and everybody just sort of skims by them unless they see a big celebrity name and now more mm -hmm. and more celebrities are doing these indie films and they're actually you know actors are, are writing them and producing them and directing mm -hmm. them and they're just so exciting um, at this point the lower budget films I think are gonna have a tougher time normally because they are used to filming in you know sometimes 9 to 14 days but with COVID-19 filming is taking a little bit longer yes. so they might need to have a little bit more money so it might be more challenging but I don't think they're gonna go anywhere I think they're gonna prevail yeah. and more and more people are, are renting these movies now because they're not doing anything yes. so I think this is the perfect time for indie films to really make a push Lauren, how exciting to, to hear you and inspiring. Can you tell us about your most inspiring interview? Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's so tough. I've had a lot of favorites, um, yes. but I would say one of my most inspiring interviews was this summer when I interviewed Montel Williams, who mm -hmm. I loved for such a long time. He's like an icon, a yes. talk show icon. Um, and just to have this time with him, um, was was truly incredible mm -hmm. and he was so lovely and so articulate and and I just I had so much respect and admiration mm -hmm. for him that at first I was very nervous and I found myself to be yes. kind of a bumbling idiot <laughs> if you will but after yes. a while he made me feel so comfortable that I finally got the words out and we had a great conversation and we discussed so many things just about Black Lives Matter and where he stands. And he is so interesting to me because he mm -hmm. appeals to um, Republicans, Democrats. Mm -hmm. uh, he appeals to everybody. He's sort of right in the middle. Um, but he was he was incredible to speak to. And he I, I would recommend that everybody who's watching this mm -hmm. go and listen to the podcast mm -hmm. with Montel. And I also uploaded it on YouTube, our video interview, just to hear what he has to say about um, where our country needs to be and, and what we need to do to come together and just be on one side. Um, I, I totally relate to that and humility as well. Mm -hmm. I, I think by, by interviewing so many stars, when, when you find that humble and the humility aspect, mm -hmm. it just puts them much higher um, yes. and, and like on, on a 
and his team level with yes. us and, and so on. So you are producing the podcast on a, on a weekly basis? Yes. Okay. It's a weekly podcast. It's released every Wednesday. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a different guest on yes. every Wednesday, whether they're a celebrity or a public figure. Um, this past week, I had Melora Walters, who is an actress. And she, um, she was in Magnolia, Boogie mm -hmm. Nights. Um, she's currently on the show Pen15 on Hulu, but she's now a filmmaker and a writer um, as well. So she directed a new movie called Drowning, and that stars Mira Sorvino, Gil Bellows, Jay Moore, fabulous cast. I talked to Melora, and I really enjoy talking to people like her because this project was so special to her because it was loosely autobiographical. Mm -hmm. um, she wrote a movie based on a woman who's completely tortured as she sends her son off to war oh. and she just can't, you know, she can't live her life. She's mm -hmm. just constantly thinking that this could be the day that he dies. So it was very relatable as a mother to interview mm -hmm. her um, and talk about this project. And for me, I, I always mm -hmm. watch the films before I interview the person so I can yes. be, you know, I can be in the moment and I can, I can talk to them about it intelligently. And I just, I really enjoyed Melora. She's, she's, so interesting to me because you say her name and not everybody knows her name, but then they see her and they're like, mm -hmm. oh, she's been on everything. She's been on <laughs> yeah, yes. she's one of those actresses that have just done everything. Yes. And now she's transitioned to become a beautiful filmmaker and, and writer and director. And she's, she's lovely. Beautiful. So that's the two interviews that you recommend. Well, Melora, yes, I absolutely <laughs> recommend her. That was just the most recent yes. one. Um, but I would also recommend, um, I recently interviewed um, ex-Fox News anchor Juliet Huddy, who mm -hmm. famously um, brought a lawsuit against Bill O'Reilly. Okay. Her, you know, she and, and him had some, some issues with sexual mm -hmm. harassment. And now they are both employed at WABC Radio, which is um, interesting to say the least. But Juliet was incredibly lovely and mm -hmm. she was so poised when talking about Bill O'Reilly. She actually even said, you know, I want to thank him because if it wasn't for because. him, I wouldn't be the person that I am. Um, so I found that to be a really great interview. Um, I would also listen to some of my interviews with, I did Malcolm McDowell this yes. summer. He is a legendary actor known for uh -huh. Clockwork Orange. He um, was surprisingly so chatty and <laughs> he gave me some amazing information about his costume in A Clockwork mm -hmm. Orange and how he basically made it up himself and Stanley yes. Kubrick, the director, was like, oh yeah, that cricket outfit yeah, that's Kubrick. yours, I love that, you should wear it. Um, and I was like, are you kidding? This information is incredible. So I would listen to that one also yes. if you're a movie buff. All right, well, thank you so much, Lauren. It was so great hosting you today. And uh, uh, our show is all about bringing inspiring women to to to, to more visibility here. So uh, thank you so much. Thanks for having <laughs> thank me. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Lauren. <laughs>